guys, Matty from Extreme Auto Carrying and Camping again with you today on another massive off-grid setup. This is on a snowy and it is a beautiful Adelaide day today and we've done these guys a beauty here. <laughs> We're really happy with this. So this one here um, is a full off-grid setup with a thousand watts of solar on the roof. We've gone for 630 amp hours of PowerPool custom-made lithiums, so two of his scouts. All the Victron fruit, as you can see down here, cavity of the DC charger. So we've got a Red Arc 25 amp DC charger um, from old mate's Pajero that's already loaded up. And that's taking care of vehicle charging with a side solar input so he can plug a portable panel to complement his thousand watts of solar on the roof. There is a Victron 30 amp controller down here and a Victron 50 amp controller. So the 50 amp controller is on the uh, 600 watt array on the roof and the 30 amp one here is on the 400 watt array. So to save old mate some money, we've used his existing 200 watt panels. So he had two of them um, and we've left them in the same position. We've just moved them away from the air conditioner to, um, to allow uh, the angle of the sun to be a little bit better because they were pushed right against the air conditioner, you know, almost touching it. So we've brought them away from the air conditioner to allow a better angle of, um, you know, less shade basically. So there's 400 watts going into that 30 and then 600 into the 50. Uh, Victron Multi Plus Inverter Charger. So the 12 volt 3120 amp inverter charger right here on factory CMS integration. So it's running all the factory outlets, guys. So that's the microwave, the air conditioner as you can hear running now. We've got, you know, washing machine at the rear, the outside outlet, uh, the ones next to the beds, which ha has the USBs in it. You know, the cafe lounge area kitchen area, you know, coffee machines, induction cookers, uh, the list goes on, hair dryers, uh, you know, cordless drill, chainsaw chargers, go nuts, Starlink, you know, those mains powered modems, you don't know, have to hack them at 12 volt. This system is off the grid, guys. You know, you can pull up on the side of the road and just press a button and she's on. You know, run your air conditioner when it's stinking hot. Even if you're driving, put the air conditioner on. Why not? You know, like, this is a day and age when you can do this with a good amount of lithium storage and done correctly. Um, this system, you can do this day in, day out, guys. These systems are designed for it. And, you know, with consumption in mind, customer to customer, it's different. This system allows it. Uh, like I said, all the Victron stuff down here. So here's the Servo and the Touch 50. So it's basically a computer system with touch screen activation for all of the products down here. So he's able to turn the inverter charger on all its modes, all at the touch screen. So um, I'll get into the new mode that the Multis come with now, which is a really good feature. Um, I won't dive into it just yet, but stick around for the video and we'll get into with that new feature. Um, but it's it's come up really good. So all the LMI fuses down here, so these are all the high current uh, busman fuses. Now take note, where are the batteries? Once again, guys, we're getting close to that November cutoff point. So we are trying to push the uh, push the envelope and actually get the batteries in a uh, proper designated location, which we've done. This has the tunnel boot, right? So we've put the batteries on the back wall of this. So this is completely in its own enclosure, separate to these quarters here. Now, um, thank you to Enerdrive for releasing a really, really awesome piece of documentation, probably the most uh, detailed one we've found. Um, I don't, I'll, I'll put a link in the description um, I don't have access to it right now to show you, but check it out. It's a very detailed document on alternative battery locations for you guys with caravans out there that want to know where and where, you know, how to do it, where and where you cannot fit batteries, lithium batteries in a van. You know, we we don't like the chassis mount for obvious reasons. They're, they're down low, they're outside, you know, water ingress, dust ingress. You know, the Australian environment is horrible. If you can put them in an enclosure somewhere, well, it's a much better scenario, just like these are in a tunnel boot. So we still will put batteries in here. We just have to put them in a special enclosure and basically vent it to outside. Um, and it's impossible to have a side hatch in some um, applications, you know, especially on a, a you know 2020 van that wasn't you know wasn't designed with that in mind. So you know there has to be a compromise, whether it's a sealed lid with external venting, or um, if it's in a cafe lounge area, same thing. You know, sealed off separated location of the batteries to the inverter charges and the inhabitable area. Perfect, it's what we want. What else to get into guys? You guys have seen all of our work, venting here, venting there. We've, we vent behind the solar controllers just to inhibit a bit more airflow, although not required from the Victron documentation. We do it anyway. 
as long as you get that airflow below it and above it, you know, basically convection of air, these will run the best they can and they derate accordingly as needed. So obviously the cooler the area is, uh, the, the more energy you're going to produce and the more efficient your products are gonna run uh, as we've, you know, we've done the big vent in front of the inverter charger here. So um, instead of me doing some rundowns guys, which you've seen heaps of videos, you know, we're running now, I'm going to dive into this little detail that's in these multis. So stick around. All right, come with me. I'm going to show you this new little feature. Now we're on the grid here, so I'm going to grab you, unplug you from my charger because this battery doesn't last. Now we'll bring you across to this little screen here, which you guys all know well and truly well. And take note, I don't know if you can see it. You see that little, little brown thing with a little arrow there? You see that? Now, it's still in bulk. All right, because I've forced a charge on this. So there's a setting on this that is called sustain. So I'm going to put it to sustain. I'll flip you around. You go on the settings. Now, as long as it's enabled originally. Now, see what it says here? Charging the battery to 100%. Press stop. Stop. The system will return to normal operation, prioritizing renewable energy. Do you want to continue? Yes, I do. Now... Look at the state. So go back to pages. Now I'm on the grid, guys. It's, this is, take note, I'm on the grid. Look at what it says, sustain. Now what, what that means is, obviously there's a little picture of a wind generator and sun there, but it's, it's, it's irrelevant, the wind generator, obviously we've got solar. So what it's doing is it's using solar to take the battery past a predetermined point or a set point that you know, us programmers will set. In this case, 13.2 volts. So what this will do is this will, it'll bring up the mains charger won't charge. It'll sustain it at 13.2 after an elapsed period. So it's it's all preset and done at the point of programming. And the only usability side of it is a forced charge. So in other words, if you plug it in the mains power, just like these guys do, and it says sustain, completely normal. If you want to mains charge these batteries at warp speed, you now just turn it on and off up here. It'll automatically do it after a predetermined point, automatically, so it is set and forget. Um, as in this case, you know, I need to fully charge these batteries upon commissioning it. So I go into it, which I'll do now for you. I'll flip you around, it's easier. So all you got to do is when you plug in the mains power and it says sustain, if you want to fully charge the batteries on, on mains power, you know, let, let's say you're somewhere for an only for a few hours and you want to you know, get the best you can out of it, you just click it, go to menu, and you go into the inverter itself. So we go into it. And it's going to say, charge the battery to 100%, press the start. Now it tells you, <coughs> pardon me, shore power will be used to complete a full battery charge for one time. After the charging process is complete, the system will return to normal operation, prioritizing solar and wind energy. Do you want to continue? Yes. Now watch, bulk. See? Now set an 8 amp current limit here. So, here's that little symbol. Cool, now it's gonna fully charge the batteries from mains. Good little feature. I just pulled the grid and take note of the little picture. Just, just going back to normal. So, if I was to plug the grid in, I'll just, I'll put the circuit breaker on the simulator and make sure we're on on. We'll charge our own, so it's on on, obviously. And we'll go, I'll turn the breaker on, that's a quick and easy way to do it, rather than me run out of science. So this is the input breaker coming on. Um, you'll see AC power load up there, but let's just see what the, uh, let's see what this new feature does when you uh, connect. All right, there it is. Now, see it's gone instantly to sustain. So sustain, so that would be me plugging in to the, you know, to a caravan park or a, or a 10 amp supply. So if you want to force it to mains charge, like straight away, very simple. Once again, easily done. Click, menu, you go into the inverter charger, okay, you go into it and you click, press the start, charge the battery to 100%. It's written there very easily. Do you want to continue? Yes, don't click this little arrow, it does nothing. You must click yes and then it'll show bulk. All right? 
And if we go back to pages, you'll see that charge rate. And that little little brown, um, you know, with an arrow coming up. So it's obviously waiting to fully charge the battery. Cool. And that current is ramping up. And that'll go up to, you know, whatever you've set the multi at. Um, in this case, be, you know, 100 and, 110 to 120 amps. It's, I have noticed it's quite a slow ramp up, which is really good. So it doesn't kind of ramp up as fast as it normally does. Um, it just kind of moves on up nice and cruisily. If that's a word, cruisily? Probably not. <laughs> Got a habit of coming up with words that don't exist. Battery's pretty close to full. So we're synchronizing at the moment, guys. The batteries are probably slightly down from 100%. So, pretty cool. It's a good little feature. We're glad Victron have done it. Um, so, it is a setting that needs to be programmed from the start. And we've done it. So, LMIs, multi plus inverted charger. There's the 50. There's the 30 amp. There's your Red Arc 25 amp DC charger. There's the Servo GX. Batteries, other side of the wall. All vented around the front, side, back of the controllers. Just a bit of overdoing there and does its job. So, yeah. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's only a quick one on this one. It's another busy week, so we'll get stuck into it. Like and subscribe. Take it easy.